According to the Maine State Police, the agency has a list of 75 unsolved homicides, most of them dating back decades. That's not including cases that were handled by local police departments with homicide detectives on their forces. The victims in each of those cases was someone's child, someone's brother or sister, mother or father. Tonight, we are focusing on a murder that happened on a Portland street more than three decades ago. The killer was never caught and a family is still looking for answers. Chris Costa is here with that story. Hey, Chris. Well, Brian and Amanda, Portland is one of those cities that investigates its own homicides. The chief tells me they are actively looking into the murder of Scott Sampson. It's a 32 year old case. The details of what happened have never been publicly discussed. And to this day, Portland police say to preserve the integrity of their investigation, they will not talk about the details. What we do know comes from the few documents that Scott Sampson's family has and their collective memories. 31 years, no witnesses, no cameras, no DNA, no fingerprints, no murder weapon. What do you go with? It's a torment. It tears your heart apart, not knowing why. It's incredibly difficult. You know, you're interviewing folks that 30 years of their lives have gone by from when the incident happened. Somebody knows what happened to Scott Sampson, but no one's talking. Nobody stabs himself in the stomach in public. 32 years later, police have not made any arrests. I have the utmost sympathy for all of the families who have a loved one who was killed and we've not been able to bring resolution to it. You murdered somebody and they had kids and now they those kids have kids and you're, you're not gonna do anything, you're not gonna say anything. November 13th, 1990. Portland police thought they were headed to a fairly routine call in the city's west end. You know, standard night, they responded for somebody who was laid out on the sidewalk. There were bystanders who thought he was just intoxicated, and then when the officers got on scene, they called paramedics uh, and soon discovered that he was deceased. Scott was dead. More than 30 years later, police and Scott's family have few answers. So it's something that detectives are actively working and hope hoping to bring to a resolution. And he's right there. First, we have to remember who Scott was. He was 26 years old when police found his lifeless body. He was living with his mom in Springvale, Maine. His two sons lived with their mother in Aroostook County. He loved his kids to death and would do anything to see them. He, again, hitchhiked from Southern Maine to Aroostook County, six to eight hours away, just to give me and my brother a toy. And then his son, Sean, now lives outside of Toronto. He was just five years old when his dad was killed. The best days are crystal clear. The worst day is not. I can't even recall when my mother or anybody sat me down and, and said, hey, like your father's gone, you know? Like I, I, it's like I almost blocked that part out. At that age, you, you shouldn't have to bury your parents. Okay? It affects you, you carry that for the rest of your life. Sean's aunt, Scott's sister, has images. He wrote poetry too. Memories she cannot shake. It goes to the memories of the body bag. It goes to the memories of on the sidewalk. She's still hoping someone else remembers something, anything that will help solve the case. My mother's dying wish was to find out who killed her son. Here's how Scott's family recounts the events of that evening. They say he was staying at an apartment with a woman he was seeing, but he wanted to leave. So he came here to 64 Pine Street. It used to be a convenience store. He was going to call his mom and get a ride home. But his family says that's when it's possible he ran into someone he knew instead. He ate a hot dog. He conversed with the clerk at the store. Apparently when he went outside from what the clerk said, he looked like he knew the individual that he was talking to. Who was that person? Did anyone else see them together? And what happened in the next 90 minutes before police found Scott's body? A police report says officers found him around two in the morning, laying on the ground with no pulse. His death is considered a homicide, but neither police nor the medical examiner will share how he died with the public. I think it must be absolutely terrible. Interim Portland Police Chief Heath Gorham says detectives must keep the details private. Why is that important? It's important because as the information filters out, somebody may know something that only a person who was related to or involved with a crime may know.
Documents from Maine's Office of the Chief Medical Examiner reference a stab wound. They also indicate there were bruises and scratches on Scott's face, hands, legs, and knees. Just as Scott's family hopes these details jog someone's memory, police say they've assigned new detectives to the case throughout the years. Fresh eyes, that could help. We have hope in every single one of our open homicides and we will continue to work them um, until we have exhausted all of our options. Knowing that a person is out there who took one of your loved ones away and that they've not been brought to justice, I, I can't imagine how that feels. Police will not say how many people of interest they have in this case, only that they've interviewed some of them. Sandra has a list of her own. People, she says, are still alive and hiding from police. Why did you stab him? It's, it's just never endless because there's no closure. There's no closure for those two boys. Most people can't keep a secret for 15 minutes, let alone 31 years. You know, so somebody somewhere knows what happened. Brian and Amanda, the family tells me that every time the, the November 13th rolls around, they make it a point to contact the police and the media to keep Scott's name in the headlines. They're hoping that somebody will call police with any information. Portland police are asking the same. Chris, thank you.